Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to week two of It's Time, a brand new series. I'm so glad you're here. So glad I'm connected to all of you online and all of you here in the room today. This is the second week. I'm going to jump in in just a moment. But I do want to say you heard on the news, we're in uh, the season of time called the 21 Days of Prayer. I'm fired up. I'm so excited. I'm, uh, this is one of the best seasons in the life of our church. One of the best ways to kick off a new year, and I just want to remind you, I'll be back. God's really put on my heart to, to lead this season, so I'll be back tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. To, to lead you, to get closer to God, to let God fill your life, and I'm really encouraging you, whether you join us online or in person, there is nothing like sitting in the presence of God, so I hope you'll come out and be a part of this every, the second week is a little bit of the week you have to push a little bit, so just tell yourself, I've already made a commitment, I'm going to be there and uh, that's part of what fasting and prayer does. It actually develops your endurance. And so I hope you'll just push through and you'll be out every day this week. And then on the news it mentioned, we're about to move and transition to our brand new church facility in just a few weeks. I'm very excited about it. And uh, you heard on the news, it's really important. Uh, you don't have to do an RSVP to come to church, but on the Saturday night of the dedication on February 6th, we need you to tell us you're coming so that we can make sure there's plenty of room for everybody. And uh, we're going to cap it at a certain point so it's safe so that everybody can come. So I really want to encourage you. There's so much room, so much space that we're planning that even those of you who feel like you can't be out, uh, just pray. Would you ask God uh, when he would release you to, to be back amongst us? And I just I hope you'll just do whatever God tells you to do. But we're going to be ready to keep you guys safe. And I hope that you'll let us know uh, by, by uh, really just this week. Just go ahead and click that button on the front of our website and let us know you and your family are coming. And then that Sunday morning, the next day, will be our 20th uh, birthday, our 20th anniversary as a church and I'm so excited about that I'm just fired up already uh, to be able to praise God together and thank God for all he's done my pastor John Jenkins will be with us Grammy uh, nominated artist uh, Anthony Brown is gonna be there it's gonna be an amazing amazing day I can't wait for you to experience it so that's where we're going we're in a year of transition everybody transition we're moving we're we're going from here to there and that's what I want to talk to you about it's time it's time so pull out your notes uh, download them if you're online and uh, so you can follow along and uh, it's time everybody to to move it's time to transition in fact it is the year of transition we're studying the book of Joshua how the children of Israel you read all through the book of Exodus God brought them to the place where they were about to go into their promise he brought them out of slavery led them to the threshold of the promised land but they weren't ready and they couldn't see it and they, they weren't prepared, they didn't have the faith to take the next step. And what they ended up doing was taking a lap for 40 years in the wilderness. 40 years going over the same ground, wandering, and they could never get to the place that God had promised them. So in the book of Joshua, Moses has now died, a new generation has come up, and God gives a significant promise to Joshua. He says, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Be strong and courageous. In other words, don't miss your moment. I've brought you back here again. It's time. It's time. Be strong and courageous. And I just want to tell you, it is the year of transition. And it's really important that you catch that because I bet there's a lot of people that would say right now, I'm tired of going over the same ground that I've been going over in my life. If, you, if you're tired of being in the wilderness, if you're tired of just feeling like you're walking in circles, that your life really has no direction, no point, no purpose, I feel like I'm going nowhere, I want to tell you that's kind of a good thing you're feeling that today because you will never go forward until you're fed up. In, in fact, until you're fed up with where you are today, you will never uh, go into your future, okay? So you've got to have that place where I, I don't want to stay here anymore. I want to move forward, and so this is the year of transition. This is our theme for the next, uh, for the entire year, as we talk about moving forward. And you've got to ask yourself: Am I ready to possess, take possession of all that God has for me? And last year, or last week, last year, well, it was just a few days ago, but. Uh, Last Sunday, I started walking you through this. So here's a little recap. If you missed it, you can go online. But everything that's happened in your life up until this point has all been preparation. And I know some of you are a little bit skeptical about this whole idea. Some of you come to church and you're like, Darren, I heard this before. Uh, it's my season. It's time to grow. Some of you are skeptical. Some of you are a little resigned. Some of you are a little feeling like you're too old and you're going, hey, listen, I... 
I've already been past my season. Like it's not that, like it's behind me. Some of you feel like you've messed up your life too much that you never can get to God's purpose. Some of you just feel like, man, I'm past my prime. You're not talking to me. <laughs> Listen, I was talking to my coach this week. I have a coach. He develops me and pushes me and strengthens me and, and uh, you know, expands my mind. And uh, I, I was joking with him. I told him I feel a little old. I turned 50 last year, so I'm 50 years old. And I said, I feel a little old. And he goes, let me stop you right there. You are proceeding from a false assumption. Your assumption is, is that the goal is 100, and when you get to 50, it's the apex, and you begin to decline the rest of your life. He goes, not so. All the research tells us, he said, that the 50s are a season of preparation for your greatest decade of productivity. That your best productivity comes in your 60s, only to be followed by the second most productive decade of life, which is your 70s. So you are on the threshold of the most productive years of your life. And that excited me. That fired me up. And I want to fire you up today. I don't care what age you are. I don't want to hear any more excuses about how old you are or what's, what's happened in your life that God, I don't care how old you are. God's, God's got you at the threshold of your next season. And some of you have been wandering around in circles for far too long. Now, I love you enough to come bring you a word to help pull you out of your yesterday and say, it's time, it's time, it's time to move forward. And so that's what the scripture is teaching us. We're studying Joshua to find out how did the children of Israel transition from where they were to the promise that God has for them. And as you read this, I'm, I'm captured by the questions that just sort of serve it. How did they prepare? How, how did they get ready for God's timing? I mean, how, were, how did they get ready to take possession of something that was in the future? And I want you to be asking those questions as we read the scripture. We're going to jump right in to Joshua chapter 1 again. Joshua commanded the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, okay, here's the first part, prepare your provisions. We talked about this last week. Prepare yourself for transition now. In three days, you will cross over this Jordan and you will go in and you will take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you. And I want you to notice the three movements here that we're going to be studying together the next few weeks. You've got to take uh, preparations now, like make preparations for your transition now, because when God's ready to, to say, it's, when it's his timing, when he's ready to move you, it's not going to be as long as it's been. You might have been 40 years in the wilderness, but it's time. In three days, you're about to cross over, and it's not going to be easy. You can't just expect it to just happen. You're going to have to take possession of what God is giving you, and so I want to cover all these things in the next few weeks, but Friends, I got to tell you, I feel like, like I, I, I want to command you, I want to exhort you, I want to bring a prophetic word to, to invite you and inspire you and call you to get ready now because God has a destiny and a purpose and a promise for your life. You're not an accident. You didn't just show up on this earth by random. You don't have to do laps and wander and be miserable and feel pointless and purposeless. God's got a, got, got a promised land for you. And so here's my message today. This is the title. You can write this down. Prepare for transition now. Because what you can't do is, is arrive there and not be ready. It's a problem to arrive and not be ready. It's a problem to show up at your moment of destiny and not have what you need. You don't have your provisions. And I want you to notice he had said before, he had said, prepare your provisions. All right? Prepare your provisions. And some of you heard that last week and you thought, ooh, okay, I need to go get that car that I've been waiting on. And I need to go shopping and uh, I need to cut on Amazon. I gotta prepare, get my provisions. What are you talking about provisions? What I'm talking about as provisions are gonna take you a lot farther than any car will ever take you. I'm not talking just about materialistic things, although that may be part of it. I'm talking about the spiritual preparation. I'm talking about your spiritual life and your personal life and your professional life and, and your, your family life, things that God wants to do inside of you. God wants to take you somewhere. So he's preparing you and he's got he's to prepare you. He's got to purge you some things. Purging's painful, everybody. But when he has you on the other side of that purging, and you start to come out as gold, he will have positioned you to step into what he has for you. So I ask you the question, right? My, my mind begins to, as I study the text and the children of Israel, how did they prepare for that transition? 
How did they prepare for God's timing? How did they take possession? How did they prepare to take possession of what God was wanting to give them? And so my question today is this, as this in this first point, as you prepare for portrayal just now, what do you need? Do you know what you need? What do you need to make the transition from where you are to where God wants to take you, from your present to your promise? Because God wants to take you somewhere, but do you even know what it is that you need? I, as, I, as I walk with God and as I study God and I study life, out of this text, I want to pull out three key life areas that you are going to need to have prepared if God is going to transition you into the next level of your destiny. And so I want to give them to you one at a time. Here is the first one. Write it down. The first area of life that you're going to need to be prepared in, say it with me, is relationships. Relationships. Remember this. You've got to have, understand, this is how God works. God works through people. God works through human beings. The problem is we have a hard time getting along with people. Some people, we have a hard time getting along with people. Like we have a, a hard time when, you know, if, if, they, if they tick you off or if you don't like being around them or if they irritate you or they just make you mad and you just go, I don't even, I, I don't even want to be around you. That is the symptom of the day where we have trouble relating with people, but I want to let you know that if, if God is going to take you into the promise, he is going to bring some people into your life because it's the way God works. It's the way he operates. He's going to bring you, you've got to learn how to get along with people. And some of you, I got to just pull it out into the open today. You just like this pandemic a little too much. I don't say all y'all, but there's some of you that you love the fact that you can stay in your house. You don't have to talk to nobody. You can be out there in the middle of nowhere. You don't have to see anyone, go anywhere. And you can say, oh, I'm just taking care of myself. But you know you don't like people. And so you're just staying away from everybody. I'm calling you out. There's some people I'd like to have... There's some, there's some times I'd like to be alone from a lot of people at certain times of my life, but here's what I know. I get that, but, but if you're going to transition from where you are, if you're going to stop doing the same laps, God has some people, some relationships that he is going to use to unlock the, the destiny that he has for you. There are some people that you, you will not get to where God is taking you unless those people open the door for you. And my bet is, my suspicion, I suspect that they are going to be people that aren't like you. My bet is that they're going to be people who have a different color than you, a different race than you, a different, they, they think differently than you. They have, a, they have a different perspective on life and God is going to use them to challenge you and to raise you up and to take you to a higher level. Preach, Pastor Darren, I am doing the best I can. Because some of you, you know, it's just people. You don't like people. You just, I'd rather just stay by myself than because, you know, one person says something you don't like, you, you, you cut them off out of your life. Bye. One person makes one post you don't like. Bye. One person you got in an argument with, it, got a, it became an unresolved conflict, and you're like, bye. It's the, it's the, <laughs> come on, everybody. I'm just driving into your driveway right now. I'm coming down your street. I'm pulling into your neighborhood. They said something you didn't like, and you're like, you, you wrote them off. And I, I would say that's a dangerous thing to do because you don't know. You've got to be kind to strangers. You've got to be kind to people that you don't know. You've got to have some patience. Listen, my brothers and sisters who are called by the name of Jesus, you call yourself a Christian. You know what the point is of this whole thing? You're not here just to go to a church. You're not here just to have a label on that says, well, I'm a Christian and I'm a nice person. God has so much more for you than that. Let me give you the vision of God for your life. God is trying to transition you from a human fallen self, from a fleshly person into the image of Jesus Christ himself. He's trying to move you from your flawed, prideful, arrogant, me, self-centered self, and he's trying to make you, listen, the helper and servant of all. Jesus, who considered himself nothing, came down from heaven, listen, left his place of privilege and decided that that wasn't something to hold on to and fight for. 
But he gave up his privilege and he says, I'm going to come and descend so that uh, as a, as one, at the, from the lowest level, I will become the servant and the helper of all. Ooh, yes. Now you are highly mistaken if you think you're going to follow Jesus and he's not going to say, come, learn of me, become like me. Oh man, I just want to preach this message today to you so badly. I hope you're ready to receive it. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get in your face. I'm trying to call you up. I'm trying to, I, I got to prepare you for a transition now. You can't stay the same. You've got to get a little disgusted about where you live and say, I can't live. I can't keep wandering. I got to go to a different level. I've got to grow. I've got, God's got something more for me. I've got a transition. Now watch this. Chapter 1, verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, Mo, uh, uh, now then, Joshua, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give the Israelites. It was their moment. And God didn't say, Joshua, I'm prepared to elevate you and take you into the promised land. No, no. You know what he said? Joshua, you got to take all these jokers with you. Like everybody, you gotta, like, I'm, I'm gonna transition you, but everybody needs to come because I want, you gotta take all of them. That means that you gotta take them, your mama and them, all of them, everybody who is, who, who is people you don't like, people who frustrate you, people who aren't paying attention to you. You gotta, you gotta help people because it's time for all y'all to move in. And I'm just calling you, I challenge you as your pastor. I'm saying, I ain't leaving one of y'all behind. I'm calling every one of you. It's time to elevate, it's time to. It's time to go to another level. It's time to transition. And you're not going to get where God wants you to go by yourself. God does not work through lone rangers. So for you to become like Christ, he is going to put you around. And I suspect people who are so different from you, he's going to put you in a church. And I know some of you right now, that's the thing. I mean, you would, I would go to church if it wasn't for the people. I, I love church, but it's the people. So now it's like, man, I get to go to church and I can go to church all by myself. I can sit in my house. I can have brunch and go to church. I can watch the sermon by myself. I can worship by myself. I can take my own offering. I can just be by myself. And it's, it's, it's awesome because I don't have to deal with people. Well, listen, I get it. I get we're in a season like that, but that is not a place that you can stay. And I want you to understand the temporary nature of doing church and doing life all by yourself. You can't do it. The Bible says that the word church means the, the gathering of the called out ones. The gathering of the called out ones. So you may, you may protect, you may have to do something for a season, but, but don't let that be a cover for you not liking people and not coming to be a part of the church of Jesus. You need to start praying. God, when are you releasing me to come back and join the gathering of the called out ones? I'm trying, I'm doing the best I can. Thank you, one and two of you. I don't know where the rest of y'all are. But I'm telling you, you cannot, you, cannot, you cannot substitute and think because you get a word and a message and some worship that you think that you've been to church. The church is us, the church is people. God's gonna put you around people who are different than you. Who, who have different views than you. Who have different backgrounds than you. Who have different, people who are difficult. God is going to help have you deal with people who are difficult. You're going to have to learn how to relate with difficult people. You're going to have to learn how to deal with people who are, who are rude to you. You're going to have to learn how to deal with people who um, frustrate you, people who, who, are, who may cuss you out. And you, listen, you don't have to elevate your anger in return. Like, just because they're screaming and cursing you out doesn't mean that you have to elevate your anger. Two, right, two wrongs don't make a right. So, so why just react like the world? If, you're a, if God, God wants to take you somewhere, and he's going to have to develop some capacity to deal with people who are different than you. All of that to say, if you're about to transition, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that relationships are so important to God that if you're going to go into the transition, God works significantly in the lives of those who have strong interpersonal relationship skills. So you can't afford to keep staying where you are. You're going to have to develop the capacity to dialogue and to listen and to understand and to care and to, and to, to be open, just to listen, just to, be, just to care about people who you might not even, you might have not even noticed before. People that you might have thought, well, you're a little below me. 
People that you might have not even thought of as significant. People you might have thought, you don't have anything to offer me. Why should I spend any time with you? Come on, let me speak to somebody today who I will go get in relation with people if they have something that can help me, but, but, if, but if you don't have anything to offer me, I, you're, I'm too busy for you. And I'm just saying that you've got to be careful because the way God works, God will make it so that you will not be dependent on man. He will, he will, he will defy uh, the wisdom of man and he will f- have your destiny. Your, someone's going to launch you that is the least likely person that you would expect. God will take somebody uh, who is nothing and use them to open the door to get you where you want to go. You better, you better knock somebody next to you and says, you don't know who you're sitting next to. I'm going somewhere. I'm going to elevate. You don't know where I'm going. I could be your boss someday. <laughs> you, know? you don't know. You don't know. So, so I'm going to take you into this. You're going to need some strong. Let me show you this now. So Joshua has the people ready, decides to send two spies into the land. And he says to them, he says, go spy secretly saying, go view the land, watch this, especially Jericho. Now I can't get into that today. I was so excited about that. That's a whole nother sermon that you better come back for. Because I'm telling you, everybody's gotten especially Jericho in your life. There is a place, I don't know what's special to you. I don't know what's especially in your life. But there is a special, there's an especially Jericho that God wants you to check out. Because there's some walls that need to come down in your life. So we will get to that. That's coming. I can't deal with that today. So excited about it. But watch this, he sends these spies into Jericho because it's the first city that they encounter. And the spies went and they came to the house, watch this, of a harlot named Rahab. And it's so significant that they give Rahab a nickname as if to distinguish her from all the other Rahabs. There's only one Rahab in the whole Bible. Why are they giving her a nickname? Why are they pointing it out that Rahab the harlot? I mean, why do we have to know that? It's not like we have to know that she had this special nickname. Because in the Bible, they do give nicknames to people to distinguish from other people so that we would know, like John the Baptist, right? Then there's John the Beloved, right? Then there's Jabba the Hutt. No, I'm just kidding. It's not in the Bible. (laughs) Why are they they calling out these two men of God go into the city and they meet, they hooked up with a hooker. Oh, they hooked up with a prostitute. They, 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 uh, they met a proprietor of a lodge, because it says they, they lodged there. They met a hoochie mama. They met a, they met, they met a lady of the evening. Hey, call, it whatever, call her whatever you want. They connected. They had the, the relational and interpersonal skills to connect with someone that they never would, would have or should have been connecting with. But those men knew how to, how to talk at a street level. And they had no idea that this person that they would meet would turn out to be the gatekeeper of their destiny. You just need to understand that this woman was kind to two strangers and she took them into her home. And guess what? She she hid them when the soldiers came to kill them. And she covered them and she protected them and she gave them vital intelligence. And she let them down and got them back to their camp so they could report the information to Joshua. And she literally was the one person that opened the door to the city for the people of God. She she was a gatekeeper to all of their destinies. And it didn't turn out so bad for her. God actually blessed her through it because the men said as they were leaving and thanking her, they said, all right, because you've been so kind to us, you hang this, you keep this scarlet cord, this rope in the window, and then get your whole family inside. When we come back with the army, get your family, get your mom and them, get your kids, get everybody inside that house with the scarlet cord and all of you who are inside will be saved. And that's a significant point because that's a foreshadowing image of Jesus himself who when he died on the cross and he shed his blood, if we'll just come under that scarlet cord, if we'll just come under the blood of Jesus, when judgment day comes, we will all be saved. It's a significant picture. It's significant that that Rahab was such a person of destiny, she would end up in Scripture being the great, 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 times 10x, great, great, great grandmother of Jesus Christ himself. And yet, it would have been so easy for them to ignore her or to say, you're beneath me, I should have nothing to do with you, or to judge her for her, because you know, she didn't, she was saved, 
Not because she had it all going on, not because she was righteous, not because she was a Christian, not because she was religious, not because she dotted all her I's and crossed all of her T's. I mean, she wasn't all right. Don't be looking at me like you're all right. Everybody's got a little prostitute in them. I know, you, it's, it's true, you all know. <laughs> everybody, everybody will sell them. Yeah, say ooh if you can't say ouch. Listen, we all know, but see what happened was God in his mercy, he just divinely connected us to someone who brought us up out of where we were and then connected us to Jesus and by his grace, he just said, you don't have to be right. Just, you have the right, you, you, you have the right heart. You're humble. And they came to, they come and, and God brought, put his grace over them. And I'm, and I'm struck by how this whole story happens because a woman was kind to strangers and two men associated with someone that they could have easily thought was lower than them and they could have ignored. I'm telling you that God has people all around you. The reason why some of you are still doing laps in the wilderness is because you won't open your eyes to see the relationships that God is trying to bring into your life, but you keep looking over them. You keep resisting them. You, you keep... You keep not uh, being aware. You want to stay all by yourself or you want to stay with people. You want to stay in your little bubble of people who think just like you. And I, I think this is so critical. I'm speaking now prophetically. I'm speaking now not only in this physical but to the spiritual. I'm saying to you that if you're going to transition from where you are, God has relationships God has people. God's going to work through people to bring you to where you need to be. In fact, let me put it to you this way. To transition to the next level, you need strong interpersonal relationship skills because where God is taking you is not where you've been. It's not where you've been. I'm, you, you know, you're leaving the wilderness behind, and I'm taking you to a new place. That means you're going to have to learn how to get along with some different people. That means, listen, white people, you're going to have to learn to like some black people. Ooh, it got quiet in here. Because, you know, what? we're hard to deal with. We are. We, <laughs> I know that. I know we are hard to deal with. You put a bunch of white people in one place, there's going to be conflict. You know, you put, you put us in a grocery store. No, I won't even go there. But you, it's gonna, there, there's going to be some conflict. Look, I have to deal with you all in the church. So it's no surprise to me that when you go out into the world, the way you post on Facebook and what you do in the world, no I mean, I'm not even surprised if I have to deal with that. <laughs> you guys, look at you all, look at me. What's he talking? You're going to have to learn to like some other people than you. And black people? My African-American friends? Amen. You're going to have to learn to like some white people. You're going to have to learn how to like some Hispanic brothers and sisters. You're going to have to learn how to like some Asian brothers and sisters. You're going to have to learn how to get along with some other people because I'm telling you, where God is taking you is not where you've been. And the church of Jesus Christ is not the, what, what the, the church that God is trying to build in this season is not the church that you came from. Because the, the church of Jesus, the Bible says, is of every nation, tribe, and tongue. It's a church of every color, every background. God is bringing people, diverse people together, and he's raising up a new kind of standard for a world that has no category. Because the Bible says when they see the way that you love God and you love one another, the world will stand back and say, there must be a God. That's the season we're in. You've not been there before. So that means you're going to have to learn to get along with some different people. And there are so many resources. There's so much stuff that you could do. I'm just calling you to say, what will you do to expand your emotional maturity in 2021? What are you going to do to expand your capacity just to love people and to be open and to like people and to grow? Because here's what the scripture says. You've got to be, if, if it's up to you, look what the Bible says. If it, if it, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. What's that, what's that saying? If it's up to you, keep peace with everybody. If you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus, then you are to be the helper and servant of everyone. And God is calling you to love people. You don't have to agree with everybody, but you better love people. You better learn how to get along with a lot of people. Because you don't know who you are sitting next to. You don't know 
who you might be talking to. You don't know who God might bring into your life if they are not the gatekeeper of your destiny. You just don't know. And my suspicion is, I suspect, it's going to be someone that's at a different place than you are. You don't know who you're talking to. In 2001, when we moved here to start this church, I'm out in the community. I don't know anybody. I mean, I had a revelation from God. I knew God wanted me to start this church, but <laughs> I'm, I'm 29 years old, don't know anybody, trying to meet people, trying to find how can we serve the community, trying to meet up with... I joined the Chamber of Commerce. There was a woman there who was the executive director. Her name was Christy Wolf, and she was so kind to me, and she said, how would you like to be a part of the Government Affairs Committee and I said, sign me up. I don't know what that is, but hey, fake it till you make it. I'm just glad that somebody <laughs> wants me to do something. So I went to that, and, and that actually opened up a door to meet every state rep and every senator. And, you know, God was putting me in places, and they would announce me and say, Pastor Darren Chesky is now opening the legislative session of 2001 down at the state house. And they're talking to Pastor Heartland Church. And I'm like, there's no Heartland Church yet, you know. <laughs> there, ain't no there ain't no members. Don't tell nobody. I'm walking in there with my suit, like, bring it on. I'm supposed to be, I'm, I'm walking into my destiny. I know I may not have the members yet, I may not have the building yet, but I, I'm going to show up and act like I'm where I'm supposed to be. So I'm back, I'm at the Chamber of Commerce, because I don't have nothing else to do. I'm just meeting people, praying for people, serving people. And they would have these lunches once a month, and they'd bring in the business people and the different folks, and I always got sat at this back table. And I would always feel a little bit like, man, I, why couldn't I be up at the, that, those front tables, you know, where the mayor is and all the important people. And the, there are some people that were like the superstars, the, the famous people in our community. And they all sat up there. And I was like, how do I get into that group? But that was not my lot that day as I sat again at the back table. And there was this businessman, very put together, but very quiet, didn't talk much. And somewhere in the course of it, when they do the thing where you exchange business cards, he says, oh, you're a pastor, and uh, where is your church? And I says, well, I know where it should be. Because I didn't have a building yet, but I'd been coming here to this building. Every day I'd been laying hands on the front door. I had a vision, I had a revelation. God, this could be a place where you transform the lives of thousands of people. I see it in my mind, this old computer store, and I would call up the real estate agents, and they would say, they, they would say you don't have no members? <laughs> and they, were, they didn't want to talk to me. They didn't want to... Unless you have some resources or some people, we don't want it. You're not legit. But I was like, that's not going to stop me. I know the revelation God's put in my heart. So you can, you can discount me, but however you discount, it's not going to discount the revelation God's put inside of my heart. So I, I would show up and keep praying. And so here I am at this, at this lunch, and this guy goes, where's your church? And I gave him my standard answer. Well, we're not wearing startup mode. We don't have a building yet, but I know where it should be. And I described it, and I told him where it was. And I said, you know, those realtors, they won't give me the time of day. And he goes, huh, that's funny, because I own that building. And, I'm, and he says, how would you like to go over there after the lunch, and I'll show you around. And so we walked into this building, and I, I was so excited, and I gave him my pitch and my vision, and I told him uh, how many people really were supporting us and how much favor God had given us. I told him about the hand of God on my life and what God had put in my heart. And at the end of the tour, I says, hey, would you lease us this building? And he says, you know what, I will. And then I asked him a question, which I took all the courage in my life to ask. But I said, listen, we don't have, any, we don't have very much money. Would you pay for the, all the, the demolition, and would you give us six months free rent? <laughs> and he had to think about that, because listen, listen, that made no business sense at all. But listen, in an act of sheer generosity, he got back to me and he says, you know what, I'll do it. It was a decision. It wasn't good business sense. It was a decision of generosity. And I think about that one day, sitting in front of that one person, a quiet man, keeping to himself, that I decided, instead of being up at the front, where I, I decided just to show kindness and, and just engage, tell me about your business and engage in conversation. And I think about what that led to. I think about how that man was a gatekeeper of my destiny. I think about how, uh, how today that man opened the door for every single one of you and everything that God has done in the last 20 years, all of the impact, all of the, the outreach, all of the missions, all of the thousands of lives that have been saved and the, the, the millions of dollars that have been given into the world from this place because one person 
And one, one person was the gatekeeper of destiny, and he, he, he made a decision of generosity. And that gets me excited now because I'm standing at the threshold of my next season. I'm standing at the threshold of the next place, the next building that God's about to move us into. And I only have to wonder, God, who have you positioned around me now? God, who have you got in, in front of me that's going to accelerate us into our next level of destiny? Who's the one that you're going to use, God, to open doors to next level of impact, Ten, a 10x level of impact? Because eyes have not seen and ears haven't heard what God's about to do. Yeah, and I, I say he, it's, it's going to be amazing, not only physically, but it's going to be amazing spiritually what God does. We're going to a different level, everybody. And that's why i got to get you ready. You can't stay in the same place. You cannot stay in the same place. I, I, I got to elevate you that God, God needs to do a work inside of you about relationships. Because there are people that God's going to bring into your life that God is going to use to move you to the next level. You're going to have to learn to get along with some people. You're going to have to learn to develop great interpersonal skills with other people. It's the time. And probably the best opportunity to do that right coming up is our small group semester that's starting. In just a few days, we're going to have an opportunity. We're going to put all these small groups online. And I'm asking every single one of you, I'm challenging every person, get into some group. Pick one. My suspicion is, is God will put you in a group with some people that are different from you. People that you might have ignored. People you might walk past in a lobby and say, I don't even relate to you. People that you would walk back and, and maybe even ignore. You wouldn't even see them. God puts you in a group and it's going to be the most powerful, transforming time of your life as God reveals things to you that you would have never otherwise seen and God is transitioning you into your purpose and into your destiny. Amen, Pastor. <laughs> So take advantage of this and go for it. Well, I could have, I could, I could have said all this and preached a, a great sermon and ended right there. But I still got two more points for you. Right. And I'll be out of your way. I'll get you out on time. I won't keep you long. But before I move on, let me just say this. If you are in a right relationship with God, he will give you the capacity to deal and to dialogue with difficult people. God, if you have a right relationship with God, he will give you what you need to deal with the difficult people that come into your life. I'm telling you, you see somebody who is always upset, always picking fights, always starting arguments. Every time they get on Facebook, they're starting a little argument or a fight or picking a fight. You see somebody that's always argumentative, someone that's always drama. Every time they show up, that's a person who has issues with God. Because the Bible says in, uh, in 1 John 3, it says, uh, when we walk in God's light, watch this, we have fellowship with one another. That means that if I, my relationship with God is right, I have connection with my brothers and sisters. I'm in relationship with them. Watch this, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. It says that when a man's ways please the Lord, even he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. That means that God's, God has supernatural capacity to make you better than you are today. God has the ability to give you the capacity to deal and absorb and to take on whatever's coming at you. And I'm just calling you to get better at that, to grow in that, to develop, because God wants to transition you. And I'm telling you, you cannot get there if you try to stay all by yourself. What did I just say? What's the first thing? What's the first point? What do you need to prepare now to be ready for where God's taking you? What is it, number one? Relationships. All right, here's my second point. Let me set it up from the text. Joshua chapter 3 now, third, third chapter. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. This is it. They're at the, they're at the moment of transition. After three days, so after they got prepared, the officers went through the camp giving orders to the people. Now watch this. I'm so excited about this. I couldn't wait to preach it to you. Here's the best part. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, you all know what the Ark is, right? You've seen the movie. It was the gold chest. It was the box that contained the, the Ten Commandments of the Lord. Like literally, this was, for, for those folks, this was their Bible. This was their revelation. This represented the, the presence of God in their lives. So watch what he's saying. When you see the ark, when you see the word of God, when you see the revelation of God and the Levites carrying it, you're to move out from your positions and go after it. Follow it. 
then you will know which way to go, watch this, since you have never been this way before. All right, let me tag this with my second point. What he's talking about here is revelation. If you are going to transition into the place that God wants to take you, you need relationships, but you're going to need revelation from God. What is revelation? Well, the word reveal means to, to see something that was previously hidden, it was revealed. And, and God wants to show you things that you can't see. God wants to reveal his word to you. God wants to talk to you. God wants to speak to you. God wants to reveal things to you. The problem is we live in a world now where no one's hearing revelation from God. Everybody's doing their own thing. Everybody's running from God. In fact, I would say that where are you getting your revelation from? Because the, the world right now is getting their revelation from TV and internet and talking heads and celebrities, and I don't think the Church of Jesus is any much different right now. Mm. It's the truth, everybody. Where are you getting your revelation? I mean, the, the fact is God wants to speak to you. What, what if you actually believe that, that instead of getting your revelation from some news commentator or some network or some celebrity or wherever you get it from, what if you said, I wonder what God has to say to my life today. I wonder what God would reveal to my life. Listen, God wants to speak to you. And here's what I've learned about God in life. God works significantly in the lives of those who have a personal relationship with him. That means that you go after him. Remember what it said? It says, when you see the word, go out, go after it, chase after it, follow it. And so these are people who have decided, I'm going after God every day. I'm gonna get, in, I'm gonna get close to him. I'm gonna spend time with him. I'm gonna get in front of his word so that I can see what God is saying to me. That's why I'm in the one-year Bible. I've been in it for 20 years now. I just read the same plan. I'm not looking for completion marks. I don't really care about completion. It is about every day I get an Old Testament, a New Testament, a Psalm, and a Proverb. I'm just looking for that one verse. Because I'm, I'm not, it's not about the Bible plan. It's about sitting in God's presence at the start of my day and saying, Lord, I'm here, speak to me. And then I just open it up and I just start reading. And I find that and I go, oh God, that is a word for me, for me right now. And it touches my heart and it changes me. The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by adapting your life to what the word of God says. So if you're not putting yourself in front of God's word, where are you getting your revelation from? Which is why you're wandering around in the wilderness. Which is why you're wandering around. You can't get to where you're frustrated. You're miserable. You feel like things are pointless. You're not listening to God. And it's a shame that people aren't paying attention to God when he wants to lift them out of, their, out, of their, out of their yesterdays. He wants to heal stuff inside of you. He wants to move you forward. He wants to take you somewhere. But instead, you resist. Like, I'm telling you, right now, we have to argue with people and convince people and cajole people and try to, like, motivate people to obey the word of God. What have we come to where we have to beg people to follow Jesus and to obey? Y'all, we, we have to beg y'all. Like, I got to beg people, please tithe, and please repent of your sins, and please uh, get in a small group, and please serve one another in love, and please find a ministry and make a difference, and please uh, turn, from, turn from your life and turn towards God. Please, please, please. I got to beg you guys. Where have we come as a church where the people who are called by God's name have to be chased by revelation instead of them chasing after it? Are you all right? Are you guys okay? I'm just driving down into your neighborhood. I'm just coming down your street. I'm just trying to park in your driveway. I'm just, try, I'm just trying to help you. I'm trying to make you go, you can't stay where you are. Stop, stop living in this darkness. Why do I have to beg y'all to come pray? You're a Christian. <laughs> Lord Jesus, forgive me. I just, I just said that to my church. Why, why do I have to beg? Why? Why? Why, why, should, why should I beg anybody for anything? It's, if you have revelation, you would go after it. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. The reason why you need this is because if you go after it, you've got to have it because since you have never been this way before. Everybody talking about unprecedented times. The whole world has changed. It's not the same. You have no idea. We're all living in a new, in a new world right now. And you, how do you know what you're supposed to do? How do you know which way to go? How do you know what decisions to make? 
You got to get in God's word. You better let God, God wants a personal relationship with you and he wants to talk to you every day and he wants to guide you and direct you and lead you. And I'm saying it's time. If not now, when? You've never been here before. That's why, that's why there's some people, I'm, I'm telling you, you don't believe me, there are, there are people that God is positioning to be in your life in this next season. Relationships that are going to elevate you, open your mind, and take you to the next level. But you're not open to it. And God wants to speak to you and, and, and say some things to your soul and, and, and convict you and start to, you know, the Bible says the word of God is like a sword. It starts to cut through all of the, the junk and the bone. And the, it just, it separates. And, and it gets down to the heart and it does a, like a surgeon does in our life. You got to let God do that in this season. Let God lift you from where you are and take you somewhere. Yes, so what do you need? What are you going to need to work on now? Because it's a shame to get where you're going and not be prepared to keep on doing the laps. So what are you gonna need to prepare now? Number one, what is it? Yes, yes, relationships. Number two, what do you need? Revelation. Revelation. All right, so here's my third one. You all know I worked hard on these R's, so uh, here's, here's the third one. It's righteousness, righteous. You need, and my, you might wanna add the word regular. You might want to add the word routine. You might, you might want to add the word systematic. I don't care whatever word you like, but add a word, regular righteousness. And the reason I say that is because some of you are all, you're real good at seasonal righteousness. You're good at, hey, for 21 days, I'll clean up my life, but as soon as I get what I need from God, then I'm going back to my old ways. As soon as God provides what the, the miracle that I prayed for, hey, I got it, so now I'm good, and now I live my life the way I used to. And I'm not interested in, listen, can I let you in on a secret? It ain't about 21 days. It's about 365. It's about, it's about you being a righteous man or woman of God this whole year. I got to get you, I got to get you to, to, to separate from the world and to chase after God. Watch what Joshua says. We're about to go into the promised land. We're about to leave yesterday and go into tomorrow. We're about to leave behind the wilderness and we're about to step into our promised land. So Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow in 24 hours. Like hours from now, the Lord will do some amazing things among you. And I'm so excited about that verse right there. I'm so excited that if you will just consecrate, what does consecrate mean? It means to set apart. It means like it's not common. Like God wants to do something special with your life. You're not just a random accident. You're not some experiment of evolution. You're not just some, somebody that, that, that is insignificant to God. God says that he wants to take people and he had, there's all these different vessels, some of wood and clay and stone, but there are some that he wants to be vessels of gold that he can pour his spirit inside of. And so consecration is about saying, God, I offer you my life. I'm going to be set apart. I'm going to be sanctified. I want to be clean. God, I repent. God, empty me out all the, all the, the stuff that I'm chasing after. And God, come fill me with your spirit. Make me righteous. Help me to walk rightly before you. And I'm telling you, this is what you, this is what I know. God works significantly in the lives of those who make regular consecration the pattern of their life. This is every day you come sit before God. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. God, renew a right spirit with me because I got hooked and jacked up yesterday. And God, I got, I, I got pulled off into the, the flesh, but today I come back again because your mercies are new every morning. God, I thank you for your grace and your, your blessing over me today. And as for me and my house today, this day I'll serve the Lord. I'm going to walk rightly before you. See, that's what 21 days of prayer will teach you. I'm not, I, I, I want to just inspire you to come sit in the presence of God. Get into his word. Let God purge some things out of your life. Because I'm telling you right. Here, here's the deal. The world is waking up to Christians who want to just look like the world. The world is waking up right now to people who just want to, who, who want to get as close to the world as they can and look nothing like the Lord. The world is waking up to ministries that are trying to look like celebrities and not call people. Listen, the world is tired. The world is tired of saying, well, if you want, if you're just going to come and look like me, why do I have to change? You should be calling me to leave my life and come look like a follower of Jesus. 
<laughs> I ain't following no fads, people. You got a pastor. I'm not following no fads of the world. I'm not going along with it. You, ain't, you don't ever have to worry me showing up here with some earring in my ear or earring in my nose or somewhere else in the body. You don't have to worry about that. I'm not chasing after the fads. You, you don't have, I ain't never waking up in the morning with my wife and saying to her, hey, is this mine or yours? I mean, you <laughs> And if that's your thing, you got an earring, with, I ain't mad at you, it's not about you, about earrings. The whole point is, I'm not going along with the fads of the world. You guys are the called out ones. You are the, you're the children of God. You are the sons and daughters of God. You ought to look like the Lord. You ought to be running towards him. Every fad that comes down the pike and y'all are just like, oh, Tiger King, I should take that into my spirit. Well, it's even, what is up with that? Guys, I'm having fun with y'all today. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to pull you out of this, this, this drone-like existence where you just go along with the fads of this world and it's leading you nowhere. And I want to help you transition. I want to help you move because God is about to take us somewhere, not only physically but spiritually. And I know this, that God works significantly in the lives of those who are pure in heart. I know that God works with people. See, listen. This is the time. This is the season now. Don't waste it. Prepare your life now. So here's what that means. That means see every relationship as a gatekeeper of your destiny. You have no idea. Get into God's word and seek revelation from him every day. Regularly consecrate your life and ask God to search me, know me, see if there's anything offensive in me. God, lead me in the way of everlasting life. God, I'm ready. Position me. Prepare me. I'm ready for performance. I'm ready to step into the destiny that he has. Because he says this. Watch this. He says, consecrate yourself because tomorrow, like it's faster than you think. It's not like all your accumulated yesterdays. Just like that, God can start doing amazing things in your life. And that's my word for you today. Do you receive it? If not... If not now, when? It's time. It's time. It's time. Can we pray together? God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for uh, the joy we have as a church. I love my church family. I'm so grateful for that we have uh, this relationship that we can, we can look at your word and we can sharpen each other and challenge each other. So now, oh Lord, I pray that as you position us, really, Lord, as you prepare us and, that, and as you purge us and you position us, God, take us, take us into your promise. Get us ready, Lord. God, I pray that we will see every relationship as, as people who are made in your image, people that you're calling us to love, and we have no idea what you might do. God, I pray that you would speak to us. As we open your word, God, reveal your truth, and reveal your light to people who will sit in darkness. God, I pray that every one of us would consecrate ourselves again. Lord, we're done backsliding. We're done going our own way. We're done drifting. We're done being lukewarm, God. Don't spit us out of your mouth, God. Uh, don't, don't let us drift. God, I, I want to obey the revelation that you give me. God, give us hearts to do what you say. I know if you don't, if I don't obey what you say, you're not going to give me any new revelation. I'll just keep doing laps. So God, I pray that you give me and all of us a heart to chase after you so we can step into the promise that you've prepared for us. And with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I'm calling somebody who's far from God. You're backslidden. You've left the church. You left Jesus. You got mad at God. Or maybe you blew up your life and made a mistake. Maybe, you've, maybe you feel like Rahab today. You're so messed up. And God is not going to hold you out because of your sin. God loves you. In fact, he called you here today on purpose. This is a moment of destiny. He wants you to come to him. He wants to forgive you. He wants to give you a fresh start. I'm here to tell you today, whether you sit at home, and I'm talking to you right in your living room, or you're sitting right here, God wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He's got a purpose for your life. And if you would say, Pastor, that's me. I'm ready. I need forgiveness. I need that fresh start. Slip your hand up right now in this room and just say, that's me. That's me. That's me. There you go. I got you. I got you. Anybody else? Lift it up. Put it back down. I got you. Yes. 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 Awesome. Anybody else? Just real quick. Yes, I got you, sir. Awesome. Today's the day. 
If you're at home and you kind of were lifting both hands, I don't know if you were or not, but I just got a picture of somebody sitting at home saying, yes, God, that's me. Will you pray this prayer? God, I know that I need you today. Tell him that. You need him. God, I'm sorry for going my own way. I'm sorry for resisting you. I'm sorry for sinning against you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Say this part. I'm ready for you to come into my life and to change me. Come inside me and live in me. And Lord, I give you my life. I surrender. Tell him that. Tell him, Lord, you can have all of me. My life, I'm yours from this day forward. I give you my life. Now, Holy Spirit, for every person praying that prayer, they can't work their way to you, but God, you can come and do a work in them and you can transform them. You can fill them with your spirit. You can... You promise to remove their sin and to give them a fresh start. I pray as they follow you now and take next steps that you would lead them to full restoration, redemption of their mistakes, and God, lead them into the promise you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, guys. Give God a great hand of praise. It's so awesome. I love that. Keep coming back. Keep coming back.